good day to our spiritual family and friends, Bible school students. We are looking at principles of God regarding money. And we saw that you cannot serve God and mammon. As a child of God, you should take control of money. Don't allow money to control, take control of you. It will become your God. Don't work for money, but let money work for you. To the honor of God Almighty and to fulfill your God-given purpose. That must be your mindset. You cannot believe in biblical prosperity if you are focused on the worldly wealth and the worldly way of prosperity. Money is a primary competitor with Christ for the Lordship of our lives. God loves us and that is why He gave us certain principles in His Word regarding the handling of money and finances. The Bible contains more than 2,350 verses regarding money and possessions. Jesus taught more about money than almost any other topic that we read about in the Bible. We already looked at what God said, what is His responsibilities regarding money, what He will do. We saw that God owns everything, God is in control, and God is our provider. We also looked at our responsibilities, what we must do according to the Word of God as faithful stewards. And today we will look at the biblical perspective of money, what God says in His Word. And I will also point out certain extremes to you which are not biblical and in line with the Word of God that certain Christians believe. Now, before we continue, let us go to Steph for the praise and worship. Good morning, my family. I want to encourage you this morning. John 7 verse 38, Jesus said, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, he was talking to the disciples about the Holy Spirit that they would receive. But no, in these uncertain times, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. And He will make a way where there seems to be no way. Let us worship Jesus this morning. God bless you. Open the heavens, come living water. All my fountains are in you. You strong. Thank you, Steve, and welcome back. 
Our scripture reading today will be out of Deuteronomy 30, verse 14 to 16. And the title of this message today is A Biblical Perspective of Money. A Biblical Perspective of Money. Deuteronomy 30, verse 14 to 16, and I'm going to read out of the Amplified, only those three verses. But the Word of God is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, so that you may obey it. Listen closely. I have set before you today life and prosperity, good and death and adversity, evil. In that, I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk, that is to live each and every day in His way, and to keep His commandments and His statutes and His judgments, precepts, so that you will live and multiply. Can you see? It's God's will for us to multiply. And that the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you are entering to possess. Our text verse, beloved, Deuteronomy 30 verse 16, I'm going to read out of the Good News Bible. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I give you today, if you love Him, obey Him, and keep His laws, then you will prosper and become a nation of many people. The Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are about to occupy. So, I want to ask you a question. Where do we get the right perspective or biblical perspective of money? In the Word of God, of course. In the Bible. We read in our scripture reading that the Word of God is very near it is in our mouths and in our hearts. It must be in two places. It must be in your heart. And it must come out of your, heart, uh, your mouth. It must come from your heart out of your mouth. So it is easy to make the right choice and to obey God. So we must know the word. Know the word in your heart. It must be alive in our hearts. It must be revelation knowledge in our hearts. It must really come out of our hearts when we speak it, out of faith. So, get into the Word, beloved, and the Word will get into you. Work the Word, and the Word will work for you. A lot of times, we as God's children don't know the Word of God. And when we know it, and if we know it, we know it only in our head. But it is not revelation knowledge in our hearts. And that is a problem. We read in Hosea 4 verse 6, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge of my law, where I reveal my will. Because you, the priestly nation, have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Beloved, we as children of God, as born-again believers, must know the Word of God and the will of God. So where, where do we find the will of God? What is the will of God? Well, we, we read in our scripture that, that I just read that the Word of God is the will of God. It is first and foremost our responsibility to know the Word of God and it is also the responsibility of the church to teach the Word of God. We must know what is the will of God regarding money and possessions. Not my opinion, not my father and mother's opinion, not the opinion of some Christians or pastors or the church. No. God gives us His principles regarding money in His word. And there's one thing that God cannot do, God cannot lie. So, if we want to be successful and if we want to prosper in life, we must know by heart His Word, His will, and we must live it. We cannot be ignorant 
and we cannot manage our finances out of a worldly perspective and expect biblical results. does not work that way. So we must know that God, what God says in His Word. We see in the Old Testament that God extended His reward of abundance to His people when they were obedient. While the uh, the, the threat of poverty was one of the consequences of disobedience to His word. So people had a choice to choose between life and prosperity, good, or death and adversity, evil, as we see in our scripture reading. They had the choice to obey or to disobey the word of God. There will always be certain consequences with regards of the choices that we make. Oh, where's God? Why is God doing this to me? Why is this happening? Well, most of the time it is because of the choices that we make, the consequences. So, remember that money and possessions can be used for good or for evil. Out of your relationship with God, or because money is your God. We must be careful of extreme teachings of wealth and of poverty, which are not biblical, not in line with the word of God, not what God says. And that is where the difference comes in. We cannot, it's not about religion, it's about the relationship, relationship with God, you know. So, some Christians believe that children of God cannot prosper. And this is a lie from the devil. It is not true. You know, they, they, they will say there's no way that you can prosper. It is not biblical. It's a lie. That is not true. Why? Because Psalm 35 27 tells us that God delights and takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. So it is the will of God that His children prosper. That is the Word of God. What is the will of God? His Word, His truth. When we stand in a loving relationship with the Lord and we have a proper biblical perspective of money and possessions, we may legitimately pray and ask for prosperity. It is the will of God and it is biblical. We also read in 3 John 1 verse 2, and I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. Beloved friend, I pray that you are prospering in every way and that you continually enjoy good health just as your soul is prospering. So we see here that John is saying here that he's praying for Gaius to prosper. It is not the will of God for his children not to prosper and not to be blessed. The Bible does not say that a godly person must live in poverty. That is not true and that is a lie of the devil and we cannot believe the lies of the devil. We must believe the word of God. A godly person and child of God may have material resources according to the word of God. Now, the opposite extreme is that all Christians who truly have faith will always prosper financially. And if you're not always prospering financially, that there is something wrong and you are not standing in a loving relationship with the Lord or you are not standing in faith. Now, this is also a lie from the devil and it is not true. So why do I say this? How can I prove this out of the word? Let me show you. Let us look for a moment at the life of the Apostle Paul and what he said. Remember the Apostle Paul wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament and he had a wonderful, awesome, loving relationship with God. Let's go to Philippians 4 verse 11 to 13. Out of the God Word translation it says, this is what Paul himself said, I'm not saying this because I'm in any need. I've learned to be content in whatever situation I'm in. I know how to live in poverty or prosperity. No matter what the situation, I've learned the secret of how to live when I'm full or when I'm hungry, 
when I have too much or when I have too little. I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that wonderful? So we see that Paul always focused on Christ and his relationship with God. You know, he knew that God was in control. He knew that, you know, God was his provider. And he knew that everything belonged and belongs to God. He never focused on his circumstances. He never focused on what he had or didn't have. He knew who he was in Christ. And he knew the will of God and the word of God. And he stood on the word of God. The word of God was in his mouth and in his heart. And he spoke out of faith. He focused on Christ and his relationship with God. So, what then is the right or the biblical guideline for prosperity? Well, we find the guideline for prosperity in Joshua 1 verse 8. Which, and it says the following. This book of the law, the word of God, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, listen to this, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So, you know, we must meditate the word of God day and night. That is what this, this scripture tells us. Now you may say, but pastor, it, it is not possible. How can I meditate the word day and night? Now, the, the, the word meditate here is the Hebrew word aha or asha. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it, it, it actually means to ponder the word of God, to look at the word of God, to rethink the word of God, to, to, to look at it and to ponder on it, to revolve the word of God, to look at it from different directions, and to make a soft, roaming, humming sound, and to really think what the word of God says, uh, you know, until it becomes part of you, until it, it becomes part of your mind and part of your heart, and it is revealed, revelation knowledge within you. All right? So now you can say, but pastor, how can we do that day and night? Well, uh, you know, it comes natural for us to, to, to think about negative and bad and evil things and, and, and the, the, the bad things in life uh, 24, 20, 24 hours out of 24, seven days a week, uh, day and night. Let me give you an example. If you, for instance, go to your work and, and, and your manager or your boss calls you in and... and uh, maybe give you a warning or something you go back to your office and you slam the door kick a hole in the door overturn your desk uh, sit on the dustbin in the corner and start to meditate oh yeah he or she is saying this and that but you know just look at his or her attitude and nobody likes him or her and just see what he or she did yesterday and you start to meditate all the negative thoughts and 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 uh before you can really realize it, you know, five hours passed and you meditated on all these negative things. You know, I'm just giving this example to show you that that, that comes very easy. So actually what we must do, you know, um, instead of going to your office and start to meditate on the negative things, you know, say, all right, yes, I'm angry. Get in touch with your feelings and say, I make a choice to forgive my boss my manager, and uh, you know, that is not what God says, and, and do as, as Paul did, start to focus on Jesus Christ and your relationship with God, and say what God says about you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, you know, start to meditate the word of God, day and night, instead of being negative and meditating on the negative and the bad things that, that, that happened or uh, could happen to you, uh, you know, change your, your mindset, change your heart, change your attitude with the Word of God. 
the truth of God, not the lies of the devil. You know? So, Joshua 1 verse 8 says, let me read this again. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. It will change your life. You know, we find two principles for biblical prosperity here. One, get into the word, and the word will get into you. Meditate on the scriptures day and night. Two, work the word, and the word will work for you. Do what is written in the scriptures. Become a doer of the word. Live the word out of your relationship with Christ. So when you apply these two principles out of your loving relationship with God, you will prosper and you will find yourself in the position to be blessed by God. Remember in all circumstances that God knows what is best for you and that He requires that you put your trust in Him for what Ever he chooses. So let us look at the two extreme perspectives and the biblical perspective of a good believer, biblical steward regarding money and possession. So I'm going to just give you a few practical examples, uh, the perspective, what we think, how we see it, what we believe as Christians. You know, I grew up in a in a, in, a, in a traditional Afrikaans church in South Africa, you know. And I had a certain perspective regarding money and possessions, you know. And my perspective was more to the, uh, in, the, in the vicinity of the poverty mindset, you know. So you've got the perspective of the person with a poverty mindset, and then you've got the biblical perspective of the uh, the biblical steward, what the Bible says, out of your relationship with God. And on the other hand, you've got the mindset of, uh, of wealth, the wealthy mindset, you know, to the other extreme. So you've got poverty, you've got wealth, and you've got the right biblical perspective of a biblical steward. So I'm going to read to you, I'm going to tell you each perspective and you know the mindset so first of all let's look at the first perspective the perspective of possessions or money or people with a poverty mindset they say that possessions and money are evil the biblical steward will say possessions and money you know it's a responsibility and the person with a wealth mindset will say possessions, money are a right. It's my right, you know. I proclaim it, it's my right. Right, the next perspective. I work to the poverty mindset only to meet my basic needs, you know. The biblical steward will say I work to serve Christ. Can you see the relationship with Christ once again? I work to serve Christ. You know, I want to honor Him. I want to honor God. And then the wealth mindset. I work to become rich. You know, it's God's will for us to be rich. I work to become rich. That's to the other extreme. And then, you know, the perspective of the godly people. You know, uh, the person with a poverty mindset will say godly people are Poor, you know, when you are poor, you are godly. You're a man of God, you know. Money is evil. It's not true. Because the steward, the biblical steward mindset, uh, and what the word of God says is that godly people are faithful. Faithful stewards. And then you, you, you get to the other side, on the other side, the wealth mindset. Godly people are wealthy. You know, if you are a man or a woman of God, you must be wealthy. That is the will of God. Also, not true. Not the right perspective. All right. Let's go to the next one. Ungodly people are. If you've got, if you've got this poverty mindset, then you will say that ungodly people are wealthy. 
You know, if you are a sinner, if you're not a godly person, then you are wealthy because, you know, money is bad. Somebody with a, the, the, the perspective of a biblical steward will say ungodly people are unfaithful. You know, unfaithful. That is what the word of God says. And then on the other hand, we've got the wealth mindset and they say ungodly people are poor. You know, people who are ungodly, they are poor. You know, God does not want to bless them. And then regarding giving, the, the person with a poverty mindset will say, I give because I must. You know, and that is how I thought about money previously. I give because I must. You know, if you don't give, you feel guilty. If you don't give, and, and just doesn't matter how much you give, you just give a little bit, you know. And, and, and then, you know, you're fine. I give because I must. You know, if I don't give, God will punish me. You know, you, you're actually standing under the law. But the biblical steward says, uh, say, I give. Because I love God. You know, I've got the character of God in my heart. For God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son. So I give because I love God. I've got the nature of God within me. I have got the character of God. I give because I love. That is the biblical perspective. The biblical steward's perspective. And then, on the other hand, the wealth mindset. I give to get don't you know the word of God? Whatever you sow, you shall reap. So I give because I want. I give to get more. Not biblical. Yes, that principle works, but it is not the motive of the heart. It should not be the motive of the heart. We should give the biblical steward because we love God. The last one. My spending. I spend my money. My spending. Poverty mindset. My spending is fearful and joyless. You know. The biblical steward. My spending is prayerful. I must know the will of God. And responsible. I must make the right choice. My spending is prayerful and responsible. That is biblical. Now on the other hand, the wealth mindset. My spending is carefree. I don't care. I just give because God will give to me again you know it's carefree uh, i don't it, it doesn't matter not right not biblical so beloved we must always manage our money god's money his possessions out of a living and loving relationship with him obeying his commandments obeying his word being obedient because we want to honor God. And then we are in the place, our hearts, the motive of our heart is right. And then God can trust us with more. May God bless you. May you have an awesome and a wonderful, wonderful week and day. Oh.